Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Resident Rule Breakers. I'm Kayla. And I'm Camille. And today's podcast is going to be about episode 509 called He'd Really Like to Put in a Central Line. It was written by Peter Elkoff and Daniela Lamas. Dr. D. Daniela Lamas. Gotta make <laughs> sure people know that she is a legitimate MD and she works at Brigham Women's in Boston. Um, yep. So we talked to her like last year. Last year. Uh, the episode was directed by James Whitmore Jr., who's also directed other episodes as a resident. So not new names here. Um, <laughs> but the reason why I bring up the fact that Daniela, I'm really happy to see that she wrote this, co-wrote this episode because it definitely looks like there's some experience talking. <laughs> yeah, it, definitely felt, it definitely felt like frustration was put in to that. Uh, um. Yeah, um, there definitely, uh, there was a lot of tweets from Amy that pretty much know, like, they, she called it med Twitter, which, but, you know, it can try to any social media site these days where there's misinformation about medicine, especially, it um, like everybody who has a Google account who <laughs> has that ha- is talking like they have a medical degree. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and I think a lot of that was put into this this episode, and, and I had people tweeting back to me like, you know, there's definitely a parallel between what's in this episode and um, the misinformation on the um, on the vaccine. COVID, yeah, yeah, on COVID, oh, there's a- and there's a line indirectly from Conrad in the episode about COVID deniers, and I was like. Ooh, they're not putting they're not they're pulling punches tonight there, there is like literally i'm not even lying to you there's like a whole industry of people who like talk about mis- medical misinformation i mean it, one of the um mlms was at the level marketing companies just shut down um because they were like about to be sued by federal courts for like claiming that they're this magic cure all dirt, you know, that will cure cancer or whatever, and ADHD and everything else and stuff. But yeah, the people on Facebook were selling these dirt that, mind you, is made by bog dirt that next to a waste plant. <laughs> so it probably would give you cancer anyways right <laughs> yeah but um but like seriously these like medical professionals quote unquote even though they're not took these like cure all things and people are like crazy enough to believe them i don't i mean like i get it big pharma and medicine and stuff like that has some negatives but like use some common sense like these people but, don't go to school for eight years i mean they get their they get their pre-med and then they go in four more years and get their medical school degree and take all these advanced classes and then they go four years or more through a residency these people have been through it they know their stuff if they did it right uh, but yeah i could see uh the way it was written uh, especially if she, she's worked COVID wards and all this other stuff where frustration was definitely part of the uh, plot line. And, um, <laughs> oh, definitely. I can uh, definitely. And, and, you know, I, I think I tweeted a tweet that said I could never work in medicine because I couldn't deal with people like uh, Wyatt, who, oh, yeah. who just like completely like doesn't listen to that his his doctors and his medical professionals that are trying to save his life like he's diagnosed with a treatable heart condition yeah and he, he doesn't know. want the treatment for it i was laughing because he was like i am too but i did my research i'm sitting there going oh god i know uh, i think i wrote a thing that said <laughs> oh geez Facebook doctors, that's not good. <laughs> like, seriously, those are like the words of conservatives or anti vaxxers or whatever. Do your own research. I'm sitting there going, like, 
did you go to did you did you get a medical degree from like you know did like here's the thing doing your own research isn't google no. doing your own research is like putting ppe and having test tubes and microscopes and you know goggles and all these machines going on you know what i mean yeah that's Cause, doing because there's a, a line in the in the episode where it says they the people who are like this usually only want something that's going to back up their own opinion or their own yeah. belief system and and disregard um, the stuff that that doesn't back it up and that's absolutely 100 right and um it's messed up with it, it's it prolonged the pandemic um significantly uh to I the mean, point like i said the, the there's a lot of misinformation going on especially in social media is like literally just killing people um honestly i think that people who spread misinformation um should be charged with something but <laughs> but but i really am glad that, that they made it a point in the show to have an episode about this and it makes you really 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 dislike the people spreading the misinformation and um uh, the fact that the platforms aren't taking more precautions against that it's yeah disconcerting but conrad and trevor are frustrated with wyatt in this episode because he uh his heart rate is just too low and aj's like oh we have a perfect solution we'll put on a pacemaker and everything which if my heart was doing what it was doing for him i say yeah i put in the pacemaker i want to live um treatable right yeah very easy it's that is it's not like it's not perfect. like surgery it's open like heart surgery like having yeah. cancer or something like that like untreatable cancer where people where you are gonna like die or whatever um you know what i mean mm -hmm. you're not gonna like like i people who have cancer who are like oh, what's that called have like alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease, disease, something that is not curable, would wish for something as simple. Epilepsy. Yeah. I could point out to my own disease here. It's not yeah, curable. Yeah, would wish for something as simple as a, a pacer that, you know, will stop all of the problems, but like, seriously. And, and uh, but, you know, Trevor's like, why don't we just do it? And like, you don't, like, I love that Connor was like, you have to respect the wishes of the patient. No matter what, you know. But remember, he quoted that. What did it? Trevor said some guy who like, whose doctor is like, um, what's your god? What a guy that, that was treated, um, and he ended up becoming like he was a lawyer, and yeah, he, he sued everybody. He sued everybody because they broke. Uh, his they didn't listen to his consent. He wanted to, to pass. Yeah. But with this one, God, it just frustrates me. This episode frustrates me big time. Uh, it, I mean, but, but Trevor learned from Conrad in this episode, I think, at the end. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I, I see a lot of people frustrated with the character. And I'm like, you know, we've only seen him for a few episodes. He needs to develop. Um, yeah. He's got a lot to learn and to do. So did Devin. I mean, seriously, Devin's first death was the, the the girl and the pilot he had Devin's grown a lot since then so and so this guy's Trevor's first death and um I have, a feel, I have a feeling it will be brought back up <laughs> oh yeah uh but Conrad was there with the, this guy while he passed away of his own free will and um just, just frustrating you know that propaganda killed up, killed another person. Um, you can have questions about like, you know, um, what's going on with the medical community, but like, not at the risk of your life, especially if you're like freaking, if what you have is curable. Yeah, exactly. It's a freaking- And the pacemaker is not even open heart surgery. Like it's like, they it's said like it's- right yeah, it it's under the skin. Under skin. Yeah. Or whatever. It's... People are stupid. Like, he's like, I don't even want medicine in my system. I'm like, 
you know, there's a reason why so many people are surviving these diseases and it's because of medication. Yeah. Um, I know I wouldn't be where I'm at without my medicine. So uh, I'm thankful for it. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, this is an episode that just definitely, I love Conrad, like he like, you took an oath, you, you can't, but I, here's the thing about Conrad saying he, you took an oath, you can't really break it, you have ethics. So, Conrad's been in his own ethics quite a few times um, and he got praised for it, but I didn't praise him for it, but a lot of people did. And uh, yep. we, we've had this discussion about that episode, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think Conrad may have, he, he's trying to have a teaching moment. And, and I think Trevor learned, because in the, in, in the end of the episode, Trevor does have, a, you know, he, he does have a heart. <laughs> you, you know, mm-hmm. but he's learning slowly, but um, I, I love that. The next question, the big question from everybody was, what is wrong with Belle? In this episode, you can see, actually at the beginning of the episode when he's with Kit, you can see his hands start to shake. Mm. And then in the surgery, he has, his hand seizes up and he leaves, which is major character growth from his part. Because it's like, I think the appendectomy and the pilot, the big, yeah, that scene. I mean, like, as I was watching the episode last night, I was like, whoa, this is just... what this this is like 180 what is going on this is major character growth on his part i know and if jessica was also in the er Mm -hmm. or with him too which Mm -hmm. she was flashback to the pilot hello (laughs) flashback to the pilot I know. So was Chu. Chu was also in the pilot mm-hmm. too. So I'm sitting there going like, "Hello, Erica. Why is no one like gonna point out like, wow, this is crazy?" But yeah, um, I think the anyway. only person that was really in that scene that wasn't in the first scene was Leela. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like the hit. It, it, it even like the end when he went to Conrad was sort of a callback to the pilot because he did the same, because Conrad went to Bell and the pilot and confronted him about like the, you know, the appendix, the heart attack problem, patient, person thing that died, right? Mm-hmm. But this time it was him going to Conrad and saying, hey, I got a problem, you need to help me out. And it was like, he's not hiding anything. He is asking for help. He is figuring, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm in love. I am in love. 100 billion percent in love right now. Yeah, I mean, just a complete 180 on this character. I'm glad he went to Conrad because, God, he just, he barely, he hit it. And, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was like, it, the, the whole storyline with Belle, this episode was mirrored with the pilot, but what we would have wished he had done in the pilot. You get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. It was like, but yeah, like, um, I hope that they retcon the storyline so that this was something that he's had this whole time because mm-hmm. it would explain the tri- the tremors in, in the first season, the shaky mm-hmm. hand and everything. I hope yeah. it's just not something new medical issue he's had. Like, yeah. I mean, a lot of people are asking, it's saying it might be Parkinson's disease, which I hope they don't give Bell. Uh, I really hope they do not give him that disease. I hope um, so too. Uh, just I'm, I'm worried that it's gonna. This might be the end of Bell's um, career. Medical, yeah, medical career. I mean, if we do the math. I mean, Bruce is 65. They've jumped ahead four years into the future. That's like, like 60, almost 70. You almost see 70. You need to be retired at 70. I mean, I know people who still work at, at in that yeah. age. Uh, but as a doctor, a practicing surgeon, probably not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but still, I, I, I do. I want to see how they, they deal with the storyline. 
has a lot of people worried. But I'm glad he went. To, if you've seen the promo for next week's episode, uh, you see that he. And if Connor's anyone that he should have gone to, definitely Conrad because master diagnostician. Yeah. Um, so, and then of course the scene with Kit. I, I brought it up, but like the the <laughs> the official account was tweeting. This is primo kit bell material <laughs> because he goes in there and pulls her glasses off her face while she's on the couch and he's like another all-nighter huh <laughs> so oh, the ceo of the hospital is pulling all-nighters in the er yep that that's they're that short staff um sad but yeah i do love the fact that he he, he was there for her you know and then, of course, Leela's working long hours, too, and she leaves a note for Devin, who was supposed to have a day off, didn't get it. <laughs> uh, he had to pull a shift, too. He's got a grant r- proposal that he was supposed to um, write because he's trying to transfer his focus. He didn't get to write. He's interviewing for an EI doctor that um, will take over for him if he, you know, because he plans on taking time away from the ER mm-hmm. to um, what up, to do his studies and stuff. Yeah, and then there's the there's a storyline with Leela that which is kind of I mean here's the thing. This episode's that, jam packed. <laughs> really. Padma's the one that's the yoga guru. But yeah, uh, uh, I'm sitting here going, yeah, I don't know, like yeah, I don't see how I mean if I don't have time. <laughs> to do to meditate i'm sure the other these doctors who work all the time definitely don't have time to meditate but i i, I like the premise but um I, i'll I, if that brings more padma into the show then i'm here for it but i don't know how they're gonna to show her doing that <laughs> you're know so weird is that like this is the first ep- this is the first episode where i actually confused Anusha and Anisha. <laughs> yeah. Because usually I can tell the difference, but this, this one, one like, not so Whoa, much. Okay. No. no, now I see that they really do look alike. But uh, but for, for Devin, you know, he's admitting to to Kit he's burnt out, and uh, he sees it in the people he's interviewing, and he's like, I, I want to have re- someone to replace me that enjoys it you know and, and loves medicine and, and loves working yeah. in the ER and I, I see his point you know so uh, but with Leela's patient uh, she has a patient who's very indecisive about her treatment she has a benign tumor on her liver and she's like well either you take medicine for pain or we do surgery to remove it and she's like I don't know which one I want I know which one I would choose and I think Lila made the right call, but like doctors have so many patients that I just don't see it feasible where she would have to be the, like, she would be like, you need to make your decision kind of go. Um, yes. But I think Lila made the right decision for her, but I would never put my, like, yes, put my life in their hands, but I would never put the decision in some, in um, someone else's hand unless I was truly incapable, like unconscious. Well, I, if there is one person to make that decision for you, I would trust the doctor. The doctor. Yeah. You know what I mean? Someone who has, like, medical degree and can look at the good and bad of both and, like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And tell is tell me what's gonna ha- what's which has the least risk or which one is the safest or whatever so and I've like, that's who I, I would go asking my um I would go on Facebook asking for advice. no 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 definitely not <laughs> I mean the I only mean, other person it, like it, I would it, trust I feel like these two patients were on this episode to kind of like you know the kind of say okay they were kind of polar opposites like right like this yeah. is what you should do and this is what you should do <laughs> <laughs> yeah they were i think i think they were daniela was making a point when she wrote this episode <laughs> <laughs> like trust the actual doctors not facebook okay. yeah 
but yeah, I mean, it's like if I had to, if I was indecisive and I wasn't, uh, I had to make a big choice about my treatment, I would ask someone with MD in a white coat for their <laughs> for their opinion. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and then of course, AJ, he's he's pretty busy too. Uh, he's doing TV appearances. He's flying from Atlanta he's to New York all the time. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's yeah. sleeping. <laughs> the woman he was he was with at the beginning of the episode was one of the women that was at his book signing, and then he signed her like back or yeah. something. I anyway. was just like, oh my oh god! My god. <laughs> but he's like appearing on like Doctor Oz and stuff like that. <laughs> AJ's gonna let he's famous. Uh, <laughs> I mean, AJ, seriously, AJ. He, he needs a more steady companion. <laughs> His mom's getting worse, AJ's mom. And yeah. her cancer, she's having breathing problems and everything. And I love that Conrad's there for him. He's like, I'll call your mom and talk to her, help her with her respiratory problem, whatever. Yeah. You know, I was like, yeah, that's a good friend right there. <laughs> but yeah. So I'm glad AJ has someone like Conrad, you know. Plus Carol trusts Conrad too, so. Because yeah. AJ can't be her doctor and her son. He has to be one or the other, and he needs to be her son. Well, he can't not be her son. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and he and doctors shouldn't you know, treat their family members, so. Yeah. So. Best, best chances with Conrad. <laughs> And uh, no Billy in this episode. Uh, I've noticed the last three episodes had have one main cast member absent. Uh, Kit, Leela, and Billy. And it's a good thing because it means that the actor gets a week off from filming because they take it's, it takes about a week to 10 days to film an episode. So yeah, I, I did notice that, that there was no, no Billy. I wonder when Conrad's going to figure out Trevor's Billy's son. <laughs> I bet that's going to be a thing that's going to happen. It won't change anything, I don't think. I don't think, but it's definitely something that will probably happen in the future. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you know, we, we had Irving was truly a background character this week. He was just like, blink and you miss him. And uh, Jessica was in that scene with, with Belle. But I was like, I need them together in a scene on screen. Yeah, can we rem- can 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 the writers like re- remember that they're married? Yeah, like I mean, they've been we haven't even seen them as a couple really. No, um, since they've been married. No, we need more film, more like give them a plot line in a scene together on screen, uh, and not as doctor and nurse but actually but like as husband and wife. as husband and wife yes so that's that's probably one of my wishes for the rest of the season going forward is it's felt more no. but as a lead up to a mid-season finale I, it's definitely lays plot lines for the future so uh so jumping into news the ratings were actually a little up if not i call them steady but they were a little up 302 million that's good yeah zero four demo so i guess because it's getting close to uh it not airing for seven weeks <laughs> people are like oh i'll watch plus it was a good episode so uh, plus people want to find out what's happening to your bell i mean that's literally the only thing i saw in the comments when i posted that promo was what's wrong with dr bell uh, um, people are worried. He's turned into a very beloved character. But yeah, like I said, this it's not he's he might have his hand back, shaky mm-hmm. hand back, but he's not hold up. He's not hold up. No, no. So and uh, yeah, left and gone and whatever else. Yeah. Okay. So Not to keep him away. Yes, hold up can go over and. In the void somewhere. Uh, next week's episode will be it's episode five ten. It's called Unknown Origin, and of course it airs Tuesday, December seventh. Our podcast will release on the thirteenth, and the last episode for seven weeks till February first. 
and it's called, it's literally uh, it's literally the first day of Kit's experimental flight go team program since Conrad out into the field. He builds a new relationship with a fellow doctor. Devin works with Trevor for the first time on a patient with a mysterious fever, which they can't find the cause of. Meanwhile, Bell is hiding his secret from the rest of the staff, and they are starting to become suspicious. So all that's in playing into that. Um, Michael Hogan, Tasso, Jessica, Denitra, Vince, Kaylee Ronane, who plays uh, the new ER doctor. Her name, character's name is Kincaid Sullivan. And Stephen Wallum. That's the one that we interviewed that girl about. Um, Catherine had a kid, hmm? right? On the hallmark? Yes, yes, this is the pl- this is the character that she um, auditioned for. <laughs> yes, uh, Stephen Wallum will return as Winston, and then Anna McKenzie, who plays Marion, and then of course uh, the little Gigi. <laughs> Gigi's, and again, like I said, five eleven has no title. We'll probably find out in January. We'll air February first, and we'll find yeah. out more air dates as we get closer. Uh, but first, let's just enjoy the holiday. <laughs> I'm tired already. I'm yeah, really got a lot going on. Um, our next podcast after next week's will be a news podcast that we'll release at the end of January after Camille's had her throat surgery and everything. So uh, enjoy your holiday, whatever it might be. So. Um, for the next God knows how many weeks left already. Two weeks? Two weeks. Yeah, maybe three. Well, technically it's all the way till the new year. Um, Kayla and I are over on my other podcast called Hallmark Harvey's. Uh, we're both reviewing Hallmark movie, Christmas movies, and interviewing actors. We have about three. <laughs> scheduled um three interviews scheduled uh, this has been a very very busy week for us because we've had to review eight movies and do two interviews so we're tired <laughs> yeah. um but anyway yeah go listen to us over there on all platforms um all the platforms you listen to a podcast Anyway, but yeah, same with that's same cool. with the resident rule breakers, obviously. Yeah. So right after listening to this, just go listen to just look up Hallmark Heartbeats. Yep. Um, and then of course, um, we have the resident rule breakers has a Patreon account. It helps keep the podcast going. It really doesn't do much because we don't have to get that much money from it. <laughs> but uh, we have some supporters. We have two, so yeah. we're very grateful to have them. And uh, what you get when you give, you know, it's just as little as a dollar a month. That's all you really need to do. Um, you get a podcast early and you get sneak peeks of like all our graphics. It, you get everything first. Let's just put it like that. <laughs> everything first. So uh, patreon.com slash the resident podcast. And then Hallmark Heartbeats has a very similar thing called buy me a coffee and fabiacoffee.com slash hmark heartbeats it's pretty much like a patreon account um for one dollar a month you get access to unedited footage of our interviews so like literally grainy footage and us talking about random stuff that isn't going to be part of the interview. <laughs> uh, it, uh, yeah parts of things that don't actually go to the actual podcast but yeah, yeah. So there's that. And it's uh, buy me a coffee. Yeah. Hate your heart heartbeats. Dot com slash H Mark Heartbeats. Yes. And of course, um, so ways to contact us. The rep our email account, which is the resident rule breakers gmail.com. We have our Facebook page, which is the resident rule breakers podcast, and then the group, which is the resident rocks fans. And uh, answer all the questions or you won't be let in. <laughs> uh, the Instagram, which is at the resident podcast. And then of course, Camille's at the resident Fox fans. I'm at KB country 37. 
And then, of course, our Twitter account, which is at Resident Podcast. And thank you, everyone, for all the support that we've we've had, uh, growth, uh, followers on our Instagram and our Twitter. And we've noticed that uh, the podcast broke 18,000 downloads since its inception. Just a lot of stuff that we are very happy to see. And thank, just want to thank you, everyone, for the, all that. So next week's episode will be our last of 2021. It'll be discussing 510 Unknown Origin. So until next week, I'm Kayla. And I'm Camille. Bye.